Welcome to the Matt Beck Podcast. Woke up this way. He's got a lot of cool stuff he's going to show you today. The latest news, industry topics, and business tips. For all hairstylists and salon owners, it's time to flip the script. Grab your precision scissors, barber combs, and swivel twist razors. Let's cut a bob, a quick shag, pixie cut with a little bit of flavor. Check out the live classes, product reviews, let's rock on. Don't forget to check out freesaloneducation.com. Woke up this way. It's going to be a great What's day. What's up, guys? How are you? I woke up this way. So, super uh, pumped for today's show. I can't wait to have uh, all of you guys logging in. We're going to learn and learn and learn. <laughs> and learn and learn and learn. Whoopsie. It's been, I've already done an interview this morning. So, uh, back on live. Very excited for today's show. Uh, make sure you're doing what I'm asking. Share the show. Uh, hit that share button right now so we can get as many people on here as possible. Uh, we're going to change things up a little bit today. Uh, what we're going to be doing a little bit different is uh, I got a focus for today's show. I'm going to teach you guys uh, a new way of cutting a bob using a razor, but then detailing with a scissor. So, um, this one's got a little bit more of a focus, but what I want you guys to know is that you can still, um, here it is. You can still text in, you can still request in the chat. What do you want to see? What do you want to see next? I can't even talk today. Uh, it's beautiful and sunny. It's a beautiful day, but I cannot talk. <laughs> My tongue's getting in the way. Um, <laughs> what's up guys. What's up, Amanda, Ashley, Chanel, Lynn, Shane, uh, some new, some new names, some old names, uh, excited to see all of you guys. Um, so you can text in, you can chat, let me know what do you want to see on a future show coming up? Uh, I'm taking requests and that's kind of what this show is all about. It's what it's been about. Uh, but in the past, what I've done is, um, kind of shared a bunch of videos, uh, some that I didn't create some that I did create. Um, the evolution of this show and where I think it's going to go is that I, I put together a specific, this is a brand new video for you guys. Um, of a technique, I'm going to do a live voiceover, uh, for the technique. So it's just going to be basically a live class teaching you how to do this. You can ask me questions in the chat as well. Um, I can answer them live. We can go back and forth. Um, and we can make this a conversation. I want to see how today goes with this. Um, I feel like we're going to have a lot more people on here and, uh, it's just going to have a little bit more of an intimate feel. And then you request, let me know what you want to see tomorrow. And if I don't have a video about it, I'm going to create it today and we'll play it tomorrow and we'll, and we'll do the same thing. So it's going to become a request show, uh, but it's not going to be instant request. It's going to be, I'm taking requests. You can text me anytime you want. That phone number is open 24 hours a day. Um, and then, you know, we can keep learning that way. So um, again, make sure that you share the show uh, and we're going to get started. So uh, your favorite color must be black. Michelle? It's not that it's my favorite color. It just hides every insecurity that I have. So, yes, it is my favorite color. Um, let's see. Hairdressing, welcome. Good to see you. Um, I know some of you guys, it's not the morning. Uh, you're not waking up with us, but uh, you are uh, going to bed, whatever it is. Uh, so, uh, good to see all of you guys. All right. So, again, make sure you share the show. Um, today, what we're going to focus on is cutting this. It's actually this bob right here. Um, it is an a line Bob. And what we do is I cut it with a razor first, um, which allows me to have speed through the technique, uh, which I really like. Then, um, as I get through it, then I do all my hard lines and detail work, um, in the dry cut. So it, it really works out well because it's fast, but then also efficient and it has those hard lines that everybody likes. So what I wanted to do is uh, create a technique for you guys that's very salon friendly. It's something that you can use uh, no matter what uh, in, in a quick world, in a quick time period. And uh, also, a lot of people ask me because some salons aren't able to blow dry right now. Some that are opening up, um, blow dry is not an option, um, which is a unique situation. So being able to cut a bob with a razor is going to be your best bet because you don't have to do as much detail work in the dry cut. So... Um, let me pull up the video. Um, I also want to get started. Actually, let me do this. Let me create something real quick because I want to be able to pop up on the screen with you guys as we are doing this video. So let me go here, do this. So let me know if you guys have any questions. We already hit a hundred comments. You guys are killing it. Uh, awesome. You guys are the best. 
All right, education there, and then let me throw me on top of that right here. Okay. All right, we got it. Camera one. And look how fast that happens. So fast. All right, so here I am in the corner. So now what we're going to do is I'm going to play this video. Uh, we're going to start off. I'm going to go through the whole technique with you guys step by step uh, and go through it. If you have questions, I can see you guys in the chat the whole time. So uh, let me know if you have any questions as we go. So here it is. So we're going to start off the technique parting the hair on the left-hand side. So if you guys have um, a client that parts in the middle, you can part it in the middle. Uh, that's not really going to affect the cut too much. Uh, and then as I go through and I section off the haircut, I'm sectioning uh, right at that division point. So we talk about the division line. Notice right uh, along the hairline, right behind the ear, how that line basically points straight down to the edge of the hairline, uh, which is basically separating the densities. So we have our thick density in the back and we have our smaller density or lower density in the front. So I'm going to go through and I'm going to braid that section away. Um, we've talked about this before in past, um, in the past videos, braiding for me is just, uh, it's a great way to really tightly section something away. It looks nice, uh, saves you on clips if you don't have a lot of clips and, uh, it's just a, a good technique to do. So now I'm going to break apart the heavy side. So what we're going to do is I'm going to section off the top, uh, and we'll cut that later. And then right at that parietal ridge area is where I'm going to section the other side, uh, the heavy side. What I mean by heavy side and weak side is that one side is going to have more density and one side is going to have less. The part side is going to be your weak side. And then where, where all the hair is going to is going to be your heavy side, heavy density. Let's see. Shane's asking... Advice and suggestions for someone like me in a financial situation to further my uh, cosmetology education. I think this is how you further your education, depending on where you live, Shane. Um, but key is, obviously, uh, there's government grants and stuff for cosmetology school if you live in the U.S. Um, if you live somewhere else and you don't need a license, then this kind of thing and taking hands-on classes is, is the best. So um, going through occipital bone, so straight down vertical, uh, in the back, and then occipital bone to behind the ear, a slight diagonal forward section. Now, I'm using the carving comb. This has a 100% cutting side and a 50% cutting side. So we're going to start off using the 100% cutting. I take a section as thick as the carving comb, and I just start to work at about a 45-degree angle with the razor and about a one-inch pathway stroke back and forth with the razor working through the section. So just like that, uh, what that does is the more you move the razor up and down, the more layered effect you get. So if I do a slight uh, kind of one inch pass back and forth, I get almost like a 45 degree angle effect. I'm also using the head shape to help create that. So you can see real quick, we take a whole four inch section and we create that 45 degree bob that we learned in school, taking all of those sections. So this is definitely a faster way to go about getting that end result. And it's also using the razor, you get a very soft edge. So now notice my elevation goes up. So as I'm working through this section, I elevate the hair a little bit higher. As the head starts to peel away, as the head starts to curve away, um, my elevation goes up. If I kept my elevation low, it would just give me a heavier end result. So it depends on what you're looking for uh, in your haircut. All right, cool. So um, again, elevation up, working through. Now, if you have somebody with really thick hair and you're using a razor, um, as you get to this part, it can really start to build up the weight. So my recommendation would be to go through, maybe use the 50% cutting side first, then go through and cut your line. Or if you're not using a carving comb, you're using a, a, a basic razor, you could go through and just kind of notch it, like take the razor, and just go in between the section a little bit to take out some weight and then work your line through it as well. You can see elevation, a uh, little bit heavier stroke with the razor. That's just going to lighten the shape a little bit more. The razor is great to do a shag. It's totally true, Elaine. Where do you get the razor comb? So you can get this comb. Uh, this is uh, the Donald Scott carving comb. You can get it on our website. 
uh, freesaloneducation.com. It's 39 bucks. Um, you get that, you can get extra blades for it. It works really well, but you can also use, if you guys don't have the cash flow to, to buy a razor right now, you can use the razor that you currently have uh, to create the same thing. So we go through, I comb the hair down. So now we're working on that weak side. So this is the parting side. Um, I section horizontally just to break the section in half. So I'm not working with as much hair. I comb that up and out, flip it away. And then what I love about using a razor, and you guys can probably attest to this. I just pause it real quick. Um, as I'm going through and cutting that section, um, the cool thing about it is that I can really draw in what I want to create. So I'm going through this section and literally just working the razor up and down. And if I want an A-line bob, then I just work the razor a little bit lower as I cut. If I want a straight across um, a balanced bob, then I just go through and I do a, a line straight across horizontally and follow that parting. So um, you really have the versatility when you're using a tool like this to decide what you want uh, lengthwise. All right, cool. Let's see. So now I let the rest of that section down and here's where a little trick's gonna come in. So I work um, the razor, cut that line first. And now what you're gonna see is I'm gonna comb everything back towards me. So I see that weight in there. It's a little bit heavy. So now I take the 50% cutting side of the carving comb and I just slide it through the edges and that's gonna lighten it up a little bit more. So that's kind of a, a cool trick that you can do with the carving comb. Matt, at times I struggle behind the ear with holes in this cut. How can I ensure that I don't make this? I'm not sure what that, that word is, but how can I ensure that I don't get a hole is basically what you're saying. So here's the thing. Um, as we're working through, let me pop over here. So on a bob, right? This is where we usually get the hole is underneath here. When I cut a bob, right? I'm focusing on the, the exterior, the layering, right? The, the pattern, the balance in it. And then I'm actually cutting all of this was a lot longer. This was all about a half an inch longer. So once I get done with the whole Bob shape and creating all of that, then I go through and I cut my line, which is what you're going to see at the end of this video. So as we're going through it, you'll see that how long that is compared to what this is here. And you're going to see that we're going to go through with our scissor and detail it. So that's kind of the biggest trick in this whole video. So let me get back playing here. Um, so I go through, I can do a little pinch cutting if I missed any pieces or any pieces look weird. Uh, that's another beauty of the razor, just going through and cutting. Um, continuing up the side, I'm just bringing everything down and cutting it the same exact way uh, as I work on this heavy side. <laughs> Matt, can't wait to get that comb. It's, it's really awesome, guys. Like, I'm telling you, it's one of my favorite tools. And it comes in, so this is the wide tooth version, uh, which I like using the wide teeth, but there's also a fine tooth version as well. Uh, and the beauty of that, of the carving comb, is that you could also hold your scissor while you have it in your hand. So you have three tools in one. You, you basically can comb, you can cut with your scissor, and then you can grab the razor side, and you can cut with the razor. So you can work all three tools at the same time. Pretty cool. Um... All right, Maria, that's cool, to, that's cool to hear. All right, so you guys can see, obviously there's gonna be a little bit longer in the very front because that was over-directed further than the other side. We'll finish that, we'll, we'll even everything out in the, in the end uh, part when we detail it dry. So we're gonna start with the flat wrap technique, working the hair over top of the head, uh, wrapping it around the head. And what this does is it forms the hair to the shape of the head as we work through it. So I'm just using my Ergo Diamond Head Paddle Brush. It's a mini paddle brush, which I love. Uh, and I just wrap the hair around. And then I do a little bit of a leafing technique to pull a little bit of extra tension in the hair and bring it down that way. Now we'll smooth it out. This is a Paul Mitchell Neuro smoothing iron. Uh, I like that iron. Let's see. So now, um, let me pause here. So you can see, look at all of the, like the lengths, the different lengths that happen. Uh, and this could happen really with cutting it with a scissor or a razor. It's a little more free looking. It's a little more jagged with a razor. So now what I'm doing is I go through with the tip of the scissor and I just work my line. 
and I start using that uh, just the tip uh, because if you use the whole wide part of the scissor, what happens is when you go in and cut, it pushes hair away, especially when it's dry. So I just use the tip of the blade and I just start working that line all the way around the haircut. And what that does is gives me that really defined sharp line. But what I love is that I cut this haircut using a razor. So I, all my shape interior wise, um, and the actual shape of the haircut is nice and light because it's like I went through and point cut the whole thing. So Odette saying my ends always flick up no matter how much weight I remove from the bottom. Um, so this is one thing that a lot of that's in the blow dry technique. Um, so a lot of clients um, will complain and I'll actually, I'm going to, what I'm going to do at the end, what I want you guys to do right now is as you have a question, just post Q before your question, just write the letter Q and then the question so that at the very end, I can easily find all of your questions and I'll just go through and rapid answer them all uh, as we go so that I can keep focusing on the technique. And then I can focus on your questions at the end and we'll really get to the bottom of everything. And I'll even reference back if I have to. All right. So Q and then your question. And if you've already posted the question, just post it again. If I haven't answered it with a Q and then I'll easily be able to see it uh, right here on the video. So, all right. So now we're going to do a little bit of slide cutting through. Uh, slide cutting removes weight, creates almost a layered effect, but it's more seamless because you're not really cutting the entire section, the entire line. Uh, and then I go through and I fine tune it. So you can see now I'm going a little more flat with the blade. So once I get the overall shape cut, when you go flat with the blade and you're only dusting the edges, you get a nice, even a finer line uh, around the edge. This took me probably about 15 minutes to go through, maybe even 20 minutes to go through and really detail out the line, uh, which is where a lot of people don't show that full part in the technique. Um, you know, it's hard. It gets a little bit boring for you guys to watch it, but I want you guys to know honestly that it takes a lot of time. And one of the tricks that I do is, um, I'll take some hairspray, a light hold hairspray and comb the, and brush the hair down with that hairspray. So it keeps it held just a little bit better. And then I go through and cut that fine line. So you can see, uh, this is the end result. Uh, beautiful look, right? Happened very quick, very easy. Um, with little effort. And that's kind of where I want, you know, any technique that I do for you guys is uh, when you think about in salon application um, and having a client, having your next client waiting, you want to be able to execute quickly. So that razor really allowed me to not have to go through and do a lot of detail work throughout the rest of the haircut, but it did allow me to speed through and quickly get the shape and then go through and spend my time detailing the edge. So, um, Let's see. All right. So we got some questions coming in. Thank you guys. That's awesome. Um, so what I want to do is I'm going to put the questions up here so we can see it. Um, let me know. Just keep posting your questions. Let's see. Uh, pull this up here. We can speed through. So what'd you guys think of the technique? Did you like it? Um, the brand new video, it will be out on our app as well, which I want to tell you guys about in one second. Let's see where we're at. I'm just pulling your questions up so I can post them up on the thing as I answer them for you guys. All right, here we go. Copy, paste. Thanks for hanging in. All right, so they're all coming up. All right. So now I'm seeing it. All right. So Carrie, first question here. There we go. Add Carrie's question. All right, Carrie. So would this cut work on fine and or thin hair? So Carrie, uh, this technique is great for fine and thin hair, but you would change up a couple things, right? So uh, let's talk about fine hair for a second um, and the different ways that we would cut it. Would we cut fine hair with the razor? Yes. Um, would I do it the same? No. So as I go through, I might give a little bit uh, less. So that movement of that back and forth with the razor, that creates less density or more, right? So the more back and forth movement I have with the razor, the more up and down I go, the less or the, 
the more weight I take out. So if she has fine hair and I'm working with fine hair and I want to create that big shape, then it's going to be a lot harder because her hair is going to want to collapse no matter what. So when I go in with a razor, I'll go much finer um, with the back and forth movement. Um, so little movements and more elevation, right? So I would get my lightness from the elevation and my movement would stay small. So that's the biggest thing that I would change up. And then when you go through to cut the fine edge, it's going to be even easier on fine, thin hair. You don't have to worry about it. Um, let's see. Here's another one. So Ruben, do you have that kind of scissor for left-handed people? Yeah, for sure. So um, if you go to freesaloneducation.com, we have a whole selection of Mizutani scissors that are for left-handed people. Um, so you can go on there and check it out. Um, the specific scissor that I'm using um, is my scissor edition. You could custom order that, um, but I don't know if we can get that in lefty. Um, but they do have, um, we have a beautiful selection of scissors that you could get in this black finish um, by ordering it on our website. It's a $50 upcharge to get the black finish or something like that, I believe. Um, but you could go on there and, and, and shop around. So go to freesaloneducation.com or shop FSE and you can uh, look for scissors there. All right, next question. So Akash, what is the difference between Ford graduation haircut and feathered cut? So, well, forward graduation is, for me, like, I haven't heard that term really, but um, what I would assume a forward graduation is, and you guys can let me know in the comments if I'm wrong, but uh, a forward graduation would be triangular graduation, I would think, uh, which means that the weight is being shifted to the front. So, a lot of times, like, like when you look at a haircut in this one, see how the weight transfers and gets long, heavier towards the front? or the weight line goes heavier. So it starts high and works its way down. Uh, that to me um, is a triangular shape, which means that I brought everything back to the back and I've cut it and then it falls heavier to the front. Um, that's how I learned it. So like basically if you take hair cutting and you've got your vertical weight, which is graduation or layering, right? So anything that's 90 degrees and above is layering Anything below 90 degrees is graduation. Um, so from zero to 90 graduation, 90 and up is um, layering. Now, so that's your vertical. Then when you look horizontally, how does your weight move? Does it move uh, light to heavy in the front? Uh, that would be triangular. Does it follow the head shape? That would be round. So it follows around the round of the head horizontally, right? Or is it square? Does it follow a straight line on the sides and a straight line in the back? So that's, that's the two basic things that I learned. So is it a graduated haircut and is it triangular? Does it fall forward? Is it a graduated haircut and is it round? Does it follow the head shape? Those are the kind of things that uh, we think about when we talk about cutting hair and creating shapes. And then the last thing you would think about is the length of the cut. How long do you want it to be? So those three things kind of make up every haircut. Uh, and you can really look at any haircut that's on somebody um, like this one, right? So this one has layers and how are the layers? Do they come straight across? This is a round layered haircut. So basically the weight follows the round of the head. If it was square, it would be a little heavy in the corners of the cut, but because it's round, it's not, it's nice and light. If you've got a triangular cut, then you can see that the weight starts lighter and higher and goes heavier towards the front. So that's kind of how you break down the shapes of cuts in the most basic form. I would agree he means triangular graduation. Thanks, Johnny. Good to see you in the chat, bub. Um, all right. Can somebody tell me let just can somebody translate this? I believe I know what it says, but I don't want to mess it up. So just somebody translate for me in the in the chat so that I can answer uh, Noel's question. That'd be great. Just so that I know exactly what it says. All right. Let's see who else we got. All right. So this is a good one, Odette. Uh, whoops, not that one. Odette right here. Uh, my ends always flick up no matter how much weight I remove at the bottom. So Adette, this is a great uh, question, a great challenge. So um, 
if you remove weight, a lot of times that makes the ends flick up, especially if you don't spend time blow drying the shape, right? So you got to think about if I start removing weight from the sides and where's it going? So anytime you lift hair and cut it, where does the weight fall? So I always think of like, if I take, let's pretend this is a string, right? Here we go. This is going to get real technical. So if I've got this string, right? And I take it and I move it over here and I cut, what happens when I let go? Everything falls this way, right? Because gravity takes it and pulls it back one way. If I bring it over here, bring it closer to you guys, I let it go. It springs back the other way. So uh, to answer your question, if you do this stuff vertically, if I pull hair up and I remove weight and I layer it and I let it go, where's the weight go? I cut it up here. So where's it going to go? It's going to fall and it's going to push down. And what happens when it pushes down is you got all these layers that go here and then it kicks the ends out. So key thing for me is to remove weight from a shape completely. Uh, go through and when you do that and then bring that length up just a little extra. Um, so it, it keeps it from uh, kind of having that flip. For me, that, that tends to work. Also, you got to realize that blow drying is going to play one of the most key roles in this whole thing. So doing a flat wrap technique in your blow dry, like we did in the video, that can be very helpful with that flip. So a lot of times a challenge comes from the way you style it, not so much from the haircut, but you know, they both can play a little bit of a role. So make sure Odette, when you get a cut or you cut somebody's hair or whatever the, the case may be, is you get a cut that maybe isn't quite as layered. Maybe it's layered up top a little bit, but then it gets a little bit heavier towards the bottom so that uh, you keep that weight and you don't have it thinned out and flipping out in the bottom. People remove more weight because they think that'll solve the problem when sometimes having weight is actually more works better. So uh, in the case of calyx and in the case of all that stuff. Okay. Let's see. Here's another question. Maria. This is cool. I love the questions, guys. Good job. Um, so Maria is saying, what other cuts could you uh, make with a razor. So you can do every single cut with a razor. Uh, that's, that's kind of the, the fun part about it is that, and a lot of people are so scared of a razor and I want people to understand that you don't need to be scared of a razor. You need to be scared of a dull razor, right? So, uh, make sure that you use a brand new blade every time. Um, just be smart about it. And then when you go, let's say you're going to do a layered cut. Um, like I said, it's all about the movement of the razor. So how much in and out movement are you doing uh, to create that layering? Elevation plays a key role. So you're still going to be elevating. Um, if you want to create shapes, it's going to be the same as we just talked about. So if I want to create a triangular shape, I'm going to over direct everything back. Um, if I want to create a round shape, I'm going to follow the round of the head. So you're doing the same thing just with the razor. Um, Let me see if I got some, uh, yeah, I do, uh, some Facebook questions. All right. Thank you, Maria. Hope that answered your question. I'll go back to YouTube questions in a sec. So uh, Jenny's saying, what exactly causes the dog ear result in a bob haircut? So this is a really good, and I have a good answer for this. Um, so what causes the dog ear effect on a bob haircut? And it's basically a uh, weight, right? So as we pass weight, a lot of times, especially with a triangular bob or a, an A-line bob, what we learned is that we overdirect everything to the back and cut it. And then when we release it, like I said, you release it and it swings, right? So what happens is people overdirect too much. They bring everything too much back and then it has to go around too many corners. So this is something I learned and I can't remember the exact person uh, that said it. And I think I heard a couple of people say it, but it's a really good analogy. Um, and it's basically like, let's say I'm a professional pitcher in uh, baseball, right? And I'm really good at throwing a baseball. So I take a baseball in, um, in a room, right? I'm in this room. Uh, there's a doorway right back there, right? So I take this baseball and I throw it. Now I can throw it and I can get the ball because I'm talented to curve a little bit. But 
as it curves, I can curve it around that wall, but eventually it's just going to fall to the ground, right? Because gravity is going to grab the ball and pull it. So the same thing happens with hair cutting. If I take that same baseball and I throw it and I curve it around that wall, can I get it to curve another wall? Can I get it to go out the other room? Probably not. It's too many curves. So what happens in a head shape and what you can kind of imagine, this is the back of the head. So in the center back, if I pull all the hair here and I cut it, which is what we kind of tend to do. So we take hair, more and more hair, and we keep pulling it back and cutting it, which does give us that longer effect. But what happens is you've got this piece of hair. So then it rounds this corner, gets to this corner, and then around this corner, right? So it's just too much weight. And when it gets over to this point, then you get that heaviness and that massive over direction because the head is a curve. All right, so I'm getting you guys back on your live. Uh, I want to answer a few more questions and we'll close out the show. Um, yes, we crashed, Lynn. Of course we crashed. Um, can everybody just uh, never buy live stream software? That would be great. Um, all right. And we didn't even try to load up a bunch of videos. So obviously that is not the problem. Uh, they're just making terrible stuff. I'm not upset. Though. All right. So uh, let's do a few more questions and then I'm going to close out the show uh, and then obviously try to figure out things again for tomorrow's show. Uh, I'm going to switch software, I believe. Uh, so that should be interesting. So make sure you tune in. Uh, all right. So let's see. Um, da, da, da. All right. So Shayna, I'm afraid of burning someone with a flat iron blow dry. How to avoid that? So, I mean, this is one thing that I think holds a lot of people back and it's just being scared of things. Um, for me, like even when you look at this show, like I could be scared that this is going to crash and things aren't going to work out. Like things always work out. So don't worry. Don't, you can't be scared of burning people unless you have a problem with burning people. And then I would say maybe you should do a job that's safer and doesn't involve other human beings. But for a serious answer, like key, key thing is uh, when I section to iron, like you shouldn't really burn people with a blow dryer and you could turn down the heat a little bit. You don't have to have massive heat on a blow dryer to blow dry people, but obviously a flat iron is really hot. So if you're nervous about that, um, take small sections, section the hair away, um, take very clean sections, work on that, and then hold the hair nice and tight in your fingers, just like you would cut it. And then don't go quite to the scalp. Uh, and then I don't think you'll have any issues uh, with burning people. I've Personally, I maybe burned one person in my whole career of 16 years with a flat iron, and I don't even remember who it was or when it happened. So uh, I just don't want to say it's never happened, but it, it's not like uh, it didn't ruin my career or anything. So just make sure that you're careful, um, you know, and just keep everything clean. Um, when hair tattooing under a disconnection cut, have any tips or other tools to use? I use edges and straight blade. Is there any schooling for this or is it trial and error stuff? Um, I don't know much about it, Andrea. So I don't want to, uh, I don't want to pretend like I, I have the answers. Johnny Livingston, who was in the chat earlier. Uh, I don't think he's in here now, but, um, he was watching the show. He's a super talented guy at it and I would hit him up on Instagram. So J cash underscore the hair tech. Uh, just ask them uh, and, and look for people that inspire you um, that do that kind of thing and just ask them because I, I don't do it. So I don't, I couldn't give you really good recommendations and I would hate to just lie. <laughs> so um, Akash, uh, difference between cutting at 90 degree angle versus cutting while 90 degree over direct. Uh, what is the difference between the two techniques? This is such a good question. Um, so Akash, so difference, those of you guys that didn't understand the question, um, I've never heard it put this way, but it's really good. So the difference between cutting 90 degrees in elevation, uh, or 90 degrees in over direction. So there is no difference. And if the moment that you guys can realize that is the moment that haircutting might click even more for you guys, because when you, whenever you lift it, so if I lift it, or if I pull it horizontally more than 90 degrees off the head shape, what's it going to do? It's going to remove weight from this way, but it's going to push weight 
to the other one, right? It might not be as extreme. So if you think about, if you take a piece, if you take a section of hair and you pull it up 90 and back 90, what are you going to get? You're going to get light from wherever you cut it. It's going to remove weight from wherever you cut it and push weight to the complete opposite direction, right? So that's kind of how cutting hair cutting works. And it's like really fun to really try to break that down and understand it. But literally it's the same thing. If I lift it to 90 and, or pull it back to 90, I'm taking weight from wherever I pull it to and wherever I cut it, I'm removing it from there. And then it's getting heavier wherever it is going to fall. Right? So that's the key. Um, ba -ba -ba -ba. all right, cool. I think I got a lot of your questions. I think, I think that was pretty much it. If you guys have any other questions, just post Q in the chat and then put your question after it so I can easily see it uh, on the screen. Um, but other than that, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I know that it was, uh, this was a little bit different of a show. Um, but did you guys like it? Do you like this style? Uh, it was a little more just teaching a class, but I, I feel like it makes the most sense as the show moves forward to really just focus on a subject and then I can promote it that way and you guys can find it easier. So it'll be like, oh, well, this one's all about haircutting and an A-line bob and then tomorrow will be about whatever. So what do you guys want to see tomorrow? Uh, let me know that and I'll start putting together that show and we'll see what see what we can come up with. And then this way, I'm also teaching a lesson every day as well. And I feel like we're going to grow more uh, in that. Uh, and I also have guests on just like I did last week. We had a lot of fun having different people on, sharing their videos. So as I find more cool people to have on the show and uh, to show to you guys, we'll play their um, their videos and their education and we'll interview them. And it'll be, it just uh, should be a lot of fun. So flower. A-line bob, triangular, graduation bob. We did that today. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Uh, we did that today. Um, and you might be popping on here because we re-went on live and you're like, where's the video? Where's the learning? But we already did it. So just go back on our YouTube channel in a little bit and you'll be able to find it. Uh, also, go to the FSE Now app. Uh, which is available right now. Uh, the update is out, guys. I don't know if you saw it. There's some bugs. We're working on it. Um, we just submitted a, an update again, but um, the new look and everything is out, and the, the stylist to stylist messaging is out, and the text in the community is out. So um, I like this new format. Cool. Ashley, I'm glad you like it. Uh, the, the new app look is so cool, guys. So if you guys have downloaded it, uh, check it out. If you have the app downloaded and you're not seeing a new format, just look for the update because it's out um, and you guys can see it. Here's the app that I'm talking about, FSE Now. All of these videos um, and a new version of this cut. I'm going to do a voiceover for it, put it on FSE Now so you guys can see it in more of an educational form and not this live show. Uh, but you can watch both on the app. But go check out FSE Now. Here it is. Here we go. the app guys so go download it fse now it's on google uh android and iphone um lynn love the app awesome color correction that's a good call i like that uh noel says i did send you my question again um i don't think i saw it Let's see if i can scroll up there it is why is it called an A-line bob haircut? Found you, Noel. Um, why is it called an A-line bob haircut? I believe because um, it usually starts uh, starts small and gets bigger. So for me, it kind of creates that V looking, that V shape. I would assume that's why. Um, no one's ever told me that answer, but uh, when you look at 
the shape that it creates, it goes short to long. So it's kind of an A line. Um, Barbara says, I bought the razor, tried changing the blade and I snapped off the handle, called the company and they never sent me a new one. So, uh, Barbara, I'm not sure about that, but if you email me, um, I'll talk to my wife, Christina, uh, obviously we just handle everything together. Um, not sure when you bought it, but if you want to email me your receipt that you bought it, um, and all of that, I can reach out to Donald Scott and see if they'll, uh, swap it out, replace it. I'm, I don't know why they wouldn't, but we can see, like we can do our best. So email Matt at free salon education.com. Send me a picture of your razor and your, uh, purchase, uh, proof of purchase. And, um, we'll see what we can do. And did you buy it from us? I'm not sure, but even if you didn't, I can help reach out to, uh, to Donald Scott. All right. Let's see. I think that was it. Melissa says, I just bought the razor. You're the best. Uh, Brandy, huge fan. Thank you so much. Can't wait to see what you do today. So Brandy, here's the deal. You're coming on late. I already did it. Um, but I'm glad that you're here. Uh, just know that we're on here live every day at 12 PM, uh, Eastern time. So you can come on, you can watch, uh, so I don't want you to miss it ever again. So make sure you tag those notifications, hit the notifications. So when I go live, you get the alert, uh, so you can be there. <laughs> Brandy. Yes. Awesome. All right. Flower emo cuts. Uh, we can probably do some emo cuts too. Uh, difference between cutting at 90 degree angle versus cutting while 90 degree overdrive. Gosh, I already answered that. Um, all right, cool. All right, guys. I think that's it. Uh, got most of your questions. This show wasn't as long as it has been in the past. Um, but I think you guys like the new format. I hope you do. Uh, we'll, we'll see how it goes this week. Obviously I'm, I'm always up for adjusting and making things better. Uh, a ton of you guys on today. I really appreciate all of you. Uh, make sure you share the show if you can. And, uh, and I can't wait to see you tomorrow. So thank you guys. What do we say at the end of the day, the end of the show, uh, it's going to be a great day. Enjoy your day outside, and we'll see you guys tomorrow. I woke up this way. It's gonna be a great day. Thanks, guys.